I'm Liz Holbrook and I'm here for Galvanize and I'm with Alyssa Gillardi who is a professional hockey player and a board member with the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association and then you also work for the Carolina Hurricanes as well as their girls and women's amateur hockey coordinator. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to chat. Awesome. Okay. So I know that you started your journey in hockey when you were a kid, mainly being one of the only girls playing with a lot of boys teams. How was that one of the tougher things you did as a kid, but how could it also may have been one of the best things you went through? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. I think you always try and look at the positives you get out of any situation. Um, and yeah, being one of the only girls on all boys hockey teams and things like that certainly at times was difficult because you did kind of feel a little bit alone on, on this journey. Um, but for me, hockey was such a passion. Um, I had so much fun with the sport. I love the challenge of it. So even if I felt, um, you know, somewhat lonely at times, um, I think I had great coaches and great teammates that helped me continue on the path that kind of got me to where I am today. And um, yeah, I think it ended up being one of the best things that ever happened in my, my hockey career and my life. So you mentioned being lonely at times. As someone who also works in an industry that's a lot of men, I feel lonely quite a bit and sometimes wonder do I really belong in this space with all these people and how have you kind of gotten through that or did get through that when you were younger yeah I think uh, I think a lot of it comes down to too I like doing things that maybe people haven't done before um, and kind of going along that path of uncharted territory so um, I think that's something that continues to drive me today is is wanting to um, kind of do something that maybe a lot of women haven't done before, um, whether it's in a, you know, something like hockey, that is a very male dominant industry. Um, so that's something that's kind of always driven me since I was younger and, and again, continues to this day. Women's hockey kind of in the U.S. hasn't really been very big, considering that women's hockey wasn't in the Olympics until 98, and a, there weren't a lot of women's programs for young women. So did you feel like you kind of were missing something by not having a female role model while playing hockey when you were younger? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you don't realize it at the time um, that you're missing something because it's never been there. Um, so it's one of those things you don't know what you have until it's, it's gone kind of thing. Um, so, you know, growing up, you know, you look up, you know, I looked up to NHL players and of course, you know, the 98 Olympic team, you had Cami Granato posters on your, on your wall, Angela Ruggieria, all these players. Um, but, you know, overall, there wasn't much visibility outside of those four years. You'd watch a, you know, 10-day tournament once every four years, and, and it's really just not enough. So um, whether it's your coaching or running clinics or mentoring young girls, I think, you know, it's one of the passions of mine is, is to be able to give back and, and just give them an outlet of someone who's kind of gone along this path that they're looking to go, whether it's um, to play prep school hockey, college hockey, try out for the national team, or, or play professionally. Um, just to be a resource for them through the highs and lows that, that come with any athlete, but at least in hockey and, and kind of help them through that journey on and off the ice. And what has that been like mentoring young women through this journey right now? It's been really cool. It's been um, something I've, I've become really passionate about um, just being able to, you know, get to know girls more, you know, off the ice rather than just kind of seeing them and running them through some drills and, uh, and being able to, you know, understand, hey, what, what are their goals and, and what do they want to aspire to achieve and, and how can I use, whether it's the experience or knowledge or resources uh, I've gained throughout my career and, and everything like that, um, how can I use that to help them um, reach that next level or, or overcome some adversity or things like that. And talking about mentoring and ways to get better, I noticed on your website for your hockey camps that you not only do stuff on the ice, you do a lot of stuff off the ice as well. You have a mentorship program that focuses on things like time management and goal setting and all sorts of other things. How have you found goal setting to play a role in your own life and overcoming obstacles? Yeah, goal setting has been just something that um, from a young age, you know, 12, 13, 14, I was probably taught some basics and really just kind of latched onto it. I think I saw the results, you know, when I set a goal for something and broke it down of how I was going to get there, um, whether it was short term or long term, and and kind of enjoying that process along the way um, is something that that helped me in my own life in hockey, um, in my career, and different things like that. So, um, you know, being able to teach that now to uh, younger players. And, and do it in a way that, you know, it's aligning with their goals, not trying to force, um, you know, what I did on them. Um, it's more, hey, what's, you know, understanding their goals and how can we 
develop a plan to help you get there. So I think usually that's just as important um, to help kind of keep direct focus and attention and, and you know, a positive environment uh, striving towards their goals as it is, you know, doing an extra rep at practice or things like that. So I think that balance of on the ice and off the ice um, and kind of just helping then become not only better hockey players and athletes, but also better people. And what are ways to kind of make a positive atmosphere for the goal setting? How do you find that balance between pushing, but also still being encouraging at the same time? Yeah, I think, um, you know, making sure the the girls and athletes understand, hey, there's going to be roadblocks. It's going to, you know, it's going to be difficult at times, um, but it's really kind of loving that process and loving the journey. Um, you know, my goal was, when I was younger and, and all the way through my twenties was, Hey, make the Olympic team. And so every day, some, whether it was nutrition or workouts or hydration or sleep and recovery, that's what my focus was. And it was these little things every single day. Um, and, you know, I didn't reach that goal ultimately, but I did all these little things along the way that got me to a really high level, got me to be speaking with you here this evening. Um, and, and I think it's making sure kids understand that, um, yes, you want a North Star to, to attain to, but it's really these little daily things um, and just loving the, the process and, you know, having fun with it ultimately um, and, and embracing the challenges that come with, with goals that you want to achieve um, each and every day. So I know sports and especially hockey from what I've seen can kind of consume and take over your life. I know I personally sometimes have a really hard time separating my work life from my personal life and realizing not everything I do is about work and it doesn't have to be about work. So with your schedule, how do you take time to practice things like self-care? Yeah, I think I've, I've always had, um, you know, I've always felt good when I'm being physically active and things like that. So even though I'm not playing competitively anymore. I'm still trying to challenge myself to, you know, learn new things, whether it's getting more into running or biking or swimming and, and things that I normally didn't do. So it's kind of keeping, um, keeping that fresh challenge. Um, now that I'm not, you know, so driven to work out for on ice performance, it's, it's, you know, now, now shifting for just looking for new challenges and, and also just, you know, reading and kind of spending time with family and friends and loved ones, I think is it's probably the most important thing, especially at this time um, when, you know, a lot of things are closed. So what we can do is kind of just look, uh, look to the people around us and in a safe way um, and just be able to enjoy those moments. So speaking of self-care, I actually recently uh, spent an evening with the Black Girl Hockey Club community. Oh, yeah. Self-care event. So I actually noticed when I was looking through like your social media accounts that you're actually a pretty big supporter of them as well. So I was kind of curious during this time where a lot of things are happening, how have your views potentially like changed about how POC are kind of perceived in this space and their struggles? And what have you kind of seen to do on your end to try and help and make things more equitable yeah um well I guess first so Renee and the Black Girl Hockey Club actually came to a Hurricanes game uh probably back in January or February of this year which is really awesome so got to spend time with them gave them a tour of the rink um we actually had Blake Bolden um who's now a scout, scout for LA Kings um first black professional female hockey player um and someone I've known since I was 11 years old um, she sent a video that we were able to share on the Jumbotron. It was just, it was an awesome time. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, obviously the, the biggest thing is just um, being open to, to seeing other perspectives and, and really understanding and, and that empathy that I think sometimes gets lost in the world today. Um, but just trying to understand, you know, another person's experience um, and what they've gone through. And I think the more conversations, the better. And I think, it really requires everyone just being open to listening. Um, and I think that's um, probably the biggest thing that over the last few months that I've personally focused on and I think a lot more people have as well is just um, really trying to know, you know, I'll never know exactly what it feels like, but I can try and listen to, the, you know, their stories and listen to their experiences and try and understand. So what kind of happened to the conversations you've been hearing lately? you know, just kind of listening to, to stories or listening to things, um, you know, especially hockey. Hockey's a predominantly white sport um, and mostly white male sport. Um, so to know that there's organizations like Black Girl Hockey Club or, um, you know, the Diversity Alliance that was formed among the NHL players and things like that to, to actually take action and, 
and you know so it's about hey understanding what they're trying to do why they're trying to do it and then how can myself and how can we all um, contribute to that to, to bring more people into the sport to make it more inclusive and you know to give more role models that again you, you can you become what you can see and if you don't see anyone who looks like you it's, it's very hard and you know go back to someone like Blake Bolden who's the, the ultimate role model in so many ways had an amazing career amazing speaker just can can you know inspire anybody and she's continuing to you know set the bar higher and higher of what she's achieved so um, young girls can look up to her and I think the more visibility um, the better yeah thanks so much for joining me tonight I know it's kind of late over on the east coast so no no problem glad we could make it work and um, I know schedules are busy so it was a pleasure to chat with you and look forward to talking more soon yeah definitely thank you so much